89 days ago. I rolled chunk ID 12345, the runescape chunk containing the Revenant Caves. After nearly 50 days playtime on this account, Dear Lord, what a sad little life. My best range weapon is still the Maple Shortbow. I have never, I repeat never, had a better ranged weapon on this account, and there is nothing that you can do to prove otherwise. However, that changes today. For the first time in nearly 500 hours, I'll be making a pretty sizable upgrade to my range gear. This video is one of my best yet, so please drop a like and subscribe to the channel, and welcome back to Cannabis Chunk. At the beginning of the last video, I asked if you thought I needed to get back a second crossbow after losing mine in episode 9. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine. The comments were 95% in favour of me not having to get crossbow back. However, there was definitely a vocal minority that did want me to get it back before moving on. And it got me to thinking, this is extreme one chunk iron man. There are principles at stake. So you understand why I'd rather not compromise my principles? Yes, I do. Totally. Unfortunately for you, it's not the First World War. You can't conscientiously object. So with all that said, I will be getting the crossbow back before moving on from this chunk. Now, the only feeling better than rolling a new chunk that I've had recently, aside from eating so much Christmas dinner that I had to lie down for three hours afterwards... I need you to call me an ambulance, or failing that... My mummy! ...is discovering that the sponsor of today's video, Raid Shadow Legends, have just released their toughest content yet, The Cursed City. With the release of The Cursed City, there has never been a better time to start playing Raid. There are over 100 stages to complete across four increasingly difficult districts. However, what really hit home for me as an extreme one chunk iron man is that you are not locked to one route through this content. Players all start in the same location, but can pick their own path through the city, and so the experience really can be whatever you want it to be. The Cursed City has a ton of new rewards, including my favourite, a new mythical champion, Carnage to Anarch, for those who can take on the city in hard mode. Raid also is currently celebrating the festive season with its limited time Christmas story, a special holiday themed event which includes a host of mini games and the chance to win both in game and real life prizes. So aside from generally being a fun game, there are two pressing reasons why now is the best time to check out Raid Shadow Legends. If you're new to Raid, click my link in the description or scan the QR code on screen and you'll be rewarded with two epic heroes, Light Sworn straight away and Juliana once you hit level 15 to help get you started. Each download helps to support me in my goal of going full time and so thank you to you guys watching and thank you to Raid for sponsoring this video. Okay, so we are off and running on a new episode and I've started the first clip with my voice fucked because I'm an idiot. Um, 27,168 KC is where we're starting. Not entirely sure where I'm going to go with this video. Um, we're starting at Revenants, but we may not stay here. We've got a lot of different goals to get done in the chunk, so maybe I'll take some time to knock out some of the other ones. Hopefully a Vigorous Chain Mace. That would be the number one pickup I could get in this video. Hopefully we get it because that would be really quite game-changing and would mean we only have the Amulet of Avarice to get, which is way more common than any of the weapons. So, yeah, if we can pick up a Vigorous Chain Mace at some point, that would be lovely. I also wouldn't turn down a crossbow at this point because, obviously, I lost mine. So getting one back would be nice because the DPS on that thing will be massive now. I think the last time I had it, I was, like, 80 three range or something so now i'm 93 i'll be hitting a lot better with it as well uh so being able to go up to some different revenants and just muck about with that would be nice as well but we shall see potentially a good way to get fletching xp would be to kill ents with my Tharam and scepter because supposedly ents are relatively weak to a uh, mage because i think they've got a level one uh magic um so what this means is potentially the thing that I might do in this video is get myself a magic short bow. So it's been a quite a long time. I can technically get like singles of bowstrings now. 
and a Magic Shortbow's 80 range. We don't quite have that banked yet in the U logs that we get from um, that we get from the Revenants. We've got about 78 banked, uh, but we could potentially knock out some additional XP here. So I don't have to kill these Ents. They were never a chunk goal because they do not spawn in this chunk. But I can, look by the looks of it, quite easily drag them through. Um, I wonder if I can, how far I can drag them. I'm going to drag them all the way over here. Uh, so they, they sit right there. So they southwest tower, don't they? Um, okay, so it looks like I can kill them quite easily, which is a good thing. I've not brought a fucking axe with me, though, for fuck's sake. Oh, well done. Okay, um, so the kills are quick. It just depends what they drop. Okay, so I, I don't think I'm going to get any loot because I think I've got to use an axe on it, all right? Yeah, so <laughs> let's go back to Ferox and grab ourselves an axe, and then we can actually test this out for a bit and see kind of what the fletching XP per hour is and decide if it's better than just chopping oak logs for us. Let's have a look at what we can get. So our axe is rubbish, and I believe that the axe does affect the logs that you get as well as your wood cutting so i've got relatively high wood cutting and a relatively crap axe so hopefully um the wood cutting level is more important than the axe itself um oh crap oh, i thought you'd get like all of them in one go looks like it's quite slow to actually chop the end log um i guess that's not the end of the world though um, but it might not be as good as we think. Although, I'll tell you what, we're getting quite a lot of decent stuff, aren't we? Um, so we arrived here at about 9 minutes, so I'll run like, you know, 10, 20 minutes, see how much XP we get. Okay, so as it turns out, the best way to do this is by hopping, um, because it's 30 seconds from when I chop this end trunk to it respawning, rather than 30 seconds after I kill it. And this is the only one that I can reach. But it's not the end of the world because hopping is quite quick. And I'm paying attention to the timing at the bottom of the screen. So it shouldn't be an issue for us. But just look how good this scepter hits on these things. Yo, I can 30s of the scepter now as well. I got up to 84 magic um, before. Um, so there we go. Yeah, look, we hit, we hit very well on these things. Um, so we can kill them quickly, even if the chopping takes a little while. Um, but we seem to be getting U-Logs as our most common, which is a very, very good thing, because that's the best thing that we can chop at the moment. Um, it would be nice to get more magics in the future, but it's not exactly the end of the world. Uh, to get used instead, the XP difference isn't too bad. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm keeping track of the timings, and we'll see how much XP we bank shortly. Um, but the total XP that it is, is 5,697, excluding the magic logs. So, 5.7k in, what, 10 minutes, so we're talking about 36k in banked fletching XP per hour, um, excluding the magic logs, which obviously we can't use yet, because we're 73 fletching. That seems quite good to me. I, do, I don't know if I'd be chopping 1,500 oak logs per hour um, at the Varrock course. Uh, not Varrock course, Varrock uh, oaks. Um, but I guess the other thing to consider is that we also got 3,100 XP in pure magic logs. So, you know, including those, which we should be doing from level 80 onwards, we're talking what, 9,000 XP in 10 minutes, so 54,000 banked fletching XP per hour, and I'm definitely not getting that at the Oaks. So my thought is this is probably actually decently better um, in terms of getting fletching XP, so I might stick at it. I'm not entirely sure. Um, I think it would be better for me in the long haul but i do want to kind of get this magic short boat asap get back to revenants and then see how much fletching xp i can bank in the u logs from revenants passively um to kind of decide if it's uh is that in our chunk yes 
um, to decide if it's worth it overall to do um, to do any f like wood chopping or ents at all because obviously if I get all the U logs I need passively for 87 fletching then it would be kind of a waste to do anything. Um, I guess the add, added layer of complexity to that is that I need 75 fire making in this chunk as well to burn magic logs. So, you know, I'd, uh, any additional logs won't go to waste, for, so to speak, because I will still probably need some. But we shall see. Um, we've got 8,000 U logs from Revenants in 27,000 Revenant kills. So that's actually quite a slow rate of gain i think i need to get about a hundred thousand rev kills <laughs> to um actually justify not doing any kind of wood cutting or fletching or fire making activity at all so i think probably in all likelihood this is our best meta strategy for getting fletching and fire making levels so thank you to whoever in the comments mentioned that the scepter would be very good for this you are absolutely correct um this kills ents very very quickly indeed and this is actually quite a chilled activity because once i click on the log it's like about a minute of like pure afk so yeah we'll stick at this for a full hour probably and kind of see if the if the logs are much different from the average that we got after 10 minutes um but yeah decent little method i would say there is 85 magic on the one chunk that's pretty cool got eight more levels to go until we start becoming magic based so um i probably won't go ahead of my range if i can avoid it um but this is an hour's worth of the logs and you know what i feel like we've probably slipped back a bit compared to what i was expecting after the 10 minutes so potentially this isn't as good as i thought um i'll do the maths on these and then uh get back to you the xp um of the magics is about 27k xp per hour which isn't great i mean that's what like a, th a thousand eleven hundred oak logs maybe which i feel like i probably could get in an hour um and then with the magic logs included it's about forty five thousand xp per hour which is probably still better than i can get from oak logs so what i'm going to do is go and chop some oak logs and just see uh what my banked fletching xp per hour is from that um that will also probably be a bit more chilled as well because i mean Look, if a PK just shows up now and kills me, like I'll lose all of that, which would be a big L. So I'm going to go check out the Oak Logs and see kind of what the banked fletching SP is from that, and then I'll have a better idea of what my plan is going forward. So we're starting at 122 logs in the bank and 3 minutes 30 on the clock in-game timer thing here. So we'll see how many logs we can bank in 10 minutes. I think... This will be a lot more representative of 10 minutes because there's not really any RNG involved. It's literally just how many logs I can chop. So we're aiming for, what if we can do more than 1100 in an hour? So we're looking at about 200 in the 10 minutes. And this is probably better, at least for immediate fletching XP. So let's see. So I just thought it might not be actually because actually cutting the oak logs will take longer than cutting the U logs if you know what I mean because each U log is worth three oak logs so it would have to maybe I'm aiming for sort of 13 1400 per hour so we'll, we'll see maybe the answer better but this is definitely a decent option as well for when I just want to relax how many I've been getting while I've been banking them so it's going to be a bit of a surprise for me as well and we have 150 ish um in the time so that means we're getting 1800 per hour which seems like a lot to me uh that's what nearly I mean yeah that's about 45k fletching xp banked in a, in in an hour no. Is that right? Yeah, 100... No. 150 times 
six. So that's, yeah, that's nothing actually. That's about, yeah, yeah, 150 in, 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 in 10 minutes. Yeah, that's 900. So that means we're banking what? 22k XP. So yeah, the Ents are definitely better. That's interesting. And the Ents Ent logs, because they're higher level, will take less time to cut. So yeah, that Ent discovery is actually relatively big. Um, that's very interesting. So yeah, I guess we'll be having to head back there at some point to get the rest of our fletching XP, because not only is it better just in the yew, maple, willow, and oak logs, but it's also giving us you know quite a fat stack of magic logs ready for when we do hit level 80 um to make higher level stuff as well so that is very interesting very interesting cool right now well that's a fun discovery bird's nest from an ent <laughs> only slightly confused as to why that is i didn't get one in that whole last hour so they must be pretty rare um, that one's from uh, the other one here was from cutting the oaks um, it looks like the magic logs that you get disproportionately, which is good in the long run, but kind of bad for my uh, goal of getting level 80, 80 fletching for the magic shortbow, because for obvious reasons, um, I can't cut the magic logs yet. So hopefully we can kind of major on some U logs and get kind of lucky on that over the next, mm, I reckon I need to do about 10 hours of this to bank the uh, 80 fletching that we need. So hopefully we can get lucky on you logs over that time. And we've got a grand total of zero from that tree. So <laughs> hopefully it will improve. And this is what we're looking at at the moment. So, <clears throat> oh God, sorry, that voice is terrible, isn't it? Um, over 10,000 new logs now, 3,500 magic logs, and then a whole bunch of the other ones as well. 1,200 maples, 1,200 willows. Let's see what the banked XP is looking like. So we've got up to 1.91 million XP banked, excluding the magic logs, which means that, oh, is it excluding the magic logs? Oh, please tell me it's excluding the magic logs. Hang on. Yeah, it is. Okay, so yeah, we need about eight, 70 to 80k more XP banked, which shouldn't be too bad. I think each trip is about 30k XP, so we just need about two and a half more trips, and then we should be good to just start doing the fletching and get to level 80. Would you love to see the five-minute login timer lamp from a uh, from account check? I stick that on farming, and with that, we have got level four. Very nice, very nice. So... Yeah, I'm, I'm either going to get level 15 farming for oaks, so if I unlock a tree patch, I can start doing some good farming, or I might get just short of level 15, because it might be nice to have the option to choose to do that grind or not at the time. So I might just leave myself one lamp short of level 15 farming, and then when I get a tree patch, decide at that point if it's a good idea to unlock it or not because I might not want to get stuck with a huge farming grind, if you know what I mean. Um, so, yeah, I think that might be the smartest thing to do. I was, for a long time, um, thinking that I couldn't get past a certain hunter level. So I'm level 32 hunter at the moment, and at level 36, you can get Earth Impling. So I was like, oh, I can't get past level 36, because then... Earth talismans are on the table, and then in theory I could potentially train rune crafting if I get access to mining and silver ore, um, which is kind of true. But also I've I've set in episode two a one in sixteen secondary training method rate, right? So they do come under that earth talismans do, um, because they're one in ten. But I don't have access to pure puro. So implings themselves just off the cards, right? Um, and crucially also, it's not level 36 because I don't have access to a net. So it's level 46 anyway. Um, so yeah, that was a bit stupid. So in theory, I can actually just get as many uh, earthen, uh, what are they called? Not eclectic, what well, young implings caught as I can 
for bowstring because there's no upper limit particularly on why I can't make as many short bows as possible. So my thought is I might host a community event either in this video or the next one uh, where I'll pay people like, well, I mean, they're only a one in 10, right? And the young implings are really easy to get. So my thought is I'll pay people maybe like two mil per bowstring that I get. Um, and, you know, that that's basically like paying them 200K per young impling. And if you hop like, five worlds you'll find one so yeah decent decent little money maker for some people if they show up um i don't know how quite how i'm going to pay that out because yeah because it, it'll be hard to keep track of but i'll get maybe i'll get people to keep track of themselves and just trust people um but yeah i'm thinking i'm just going to make like a load of magic short bows because i was kind of on this assumption that i could only get so many bowstring before i got to earth implings um, but because I don't have access to Piro Piro, it's not the case. And if I do get access to Piro Piro, I will have to get level 89, um, 89 Hunter anyway for Lucky Implings, uh, you know, if I roll Piro Piro in the future. So at that point, it doesn't really matter, does it? Like, <laughs> I'll be getting the runecrafting and a load of other stupid bullshit anyway. So, yeah, I may as well just get the Magic Short Bow sooner rather than later get loads of magic short bros so i'm like happy to lose them and that should be a decent little way to um to hopefully speed up this revenant grind because if i can kill demons cyclopses hellhounds something like that relatively consistently that should speed me up in comparison to what i'm doing in the pyre fiends at the minute and i'm really hopeful that 93 range plus a magic short bone full black dragon hide should be enough to get me decent demon kills, surely, sure. I mean, I I think a magic short bow is like over three times the accuracy of a maple short bow. So hopefully we'll be all right. I know if we get an amulet of avarice and therefore the twenty percent salve bonus, I will be. But I'm hoping just with a magic short bow and no salve, I'll definitely be fine. No, no. I've been doing the wrong thing, right? So I'm at 1.935 mil XP banks. I'm 50k short. But I've just checked on the tracker and it's got me that I'm making arrow shafts with everything except the U logs. So if I set it to long, I'm guessing I'm probably way overshooting now, am I? Yeah, oh no. Oh no, I've actually got nearly level 81. I've got 2.184 mil XP banked. How did I. How did I... Oh, no. You moron. You absolute cretin. Awesome. So I can just start fletching now. Oh, no. That's so bad. How am I such an idiot? Well, I guess it's I guess it's just more XP in the long run. But, I mean... Oh, you donut. I could have stopped doing this uh, four, five hours ago. For fuck's sake... <laughs> Yeah, it was including the stringing into the willow and maple logs. So actually, I'm at 2,040,000 XP, which is only an overshoot of about 55 XP, 55k XP. So I could have probably stopped this about an hour ago. So not too bad, actually. But we now currently have level 80 fletching banked. And then we also have the magic logs as well. My goal with the magic logs, though, is to not use them until I've got magic longbows. Except, obviously, magic short bows I'm actually going to use. Um, but other than that, it would be a waste to make loads of magic short bows with it for quick XP because, like, it's just, you know, one magic log could just equal more XP once I get to level 85. So I'll probably save the magic logs to 85 unless I can green log the revenants way before that. But we shall see. Because I overshot a bit, I can actually just ignore the oak logs completely and start on the willow logs, which is quite exciting. Um, I've, I just realised it's quite neat that I've got um, maple logs because I don't believe I can actually get them via any other method than just the um, than just the ends. I don't think I've got any maple logs that I can chop. I don't even think I've got any willow logs I can chop, have I? Yeah, so that's interesting. Um, but that means that we can now just start straight on the willow logs, which are actually going to be some decent XP. So, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll see what the XP per hour is. I mean, I think it's probably going to be 10 hours, maybe less, to get to level 80. Yeah, probably about 10 hours, I would say. Maybe slightly more. 
And yeah, because these are going to be what, like 60k XP per hour, maybe. Um, and then you logs will probably be about 110k XP per hour. So we shall see. So I'm getting about 75k XP per hour doing the Willow Longbows, which means we're getting just under 2,000 cut per hour. So that means that overall, yeah, we should be getting about 130, 140k XP per hour from the use. So yeah, it should take about 10 hours, maybe slightly less to get to level 80. And then we'll be able to make ourselves a magic short bow, which is going to be biblical. Level 74, nothing at this, but 1050 total as well, which is why it's a little bit of a milestone for me. And uh, the next one is going to be 75, which probably unlocks nothing. Although I guess technically probably unlocks that I can cut a magic log into arrow shafts. But we shall see in about mm, an hour and a half's time. See, since the last clip I've been doing it on mobile, but we're at 76 and a half fletching right now. XP per hour is booming now that we're using the U logs. We're out of willows and maples. So, yeah, we're kind of flying through it. We'll be 80 before we know it. So level 77, and that's level for rune javelins. Three levels to go. Let's keep pushing on. Right, it is Christmas Eve at the time of recording, and we're just about to get level 80 fletching as the last thing we do before santa claus comes to visit and there we are you can now make magic short bows so what we're going to do is grab out an invent of magic logs and convert those into magic short bows now i don't have any um bowstring to use on these my goal is to get 27 bowstring um, ideally um, I'm probably not going to do that straight away. I'm probably just going to go and get a few. Um, but I might just do that on mobile, knock it out real quick. And then when I go to get 27, I might do a kind of community event to um, to actually knock those out. Because I think 27 magic short bows will just be enough to cover me for anything that I might need to do. Um, that should take about 270 young implings, which finding those out in the wild is kind of crazy and expensive um or slow if i do it by myself but the main thing is there is 27 magic short bows unfinished in the bank and now all i need to do is go and find myself a bowstring which i don't think should be too tricky but look at that and just look at all the bows that we have so we didn't overshoot by much we've got our 1400 maples our 1400 willows our 10100 u long bows and we've only got 384 u logs left so that is not too bad we've got these 3600 magic logs but my goal is to hopefully not use any of those until 85 fletching because we'll get maximum bang for our buck by making magic longbows out of them. Um, but yeah, kind of flying through it, kind of happy to have level 80. I think making these magic short bows is going to be very, very cool. And uh, I'm excited to go and try them out at the Revenants. We are back with a vengeance on the splashing. I bought like 110k chaos and 300 and something k air runes last night. So we're going to be pushing this quite highly. And what we're going to do now is we're going to get back to hunting the bowstring. So I didn't actually get any bowstring on mobile. I hopped like 200 worlds and didn't get a single bowstring. So we're back now with the community event I just posted in the Discord and on YouTube community that we're getting going. Uh, looks like a few people have bothered to show up thus far. So I think what I'm going to just do is teleport into Varrock and start catching some young implings. Oh, there we go. Our first bowstring for sixth flag who's going to be getting five mil from me. Lovely. Things you love to see. Oh, just got another one. Uh, Sasaka, that one is for, so I'll write that down. Very nice, very nice, very nice. And that is 33 Hunter, the first level of the grind. And we got a bowstring for that, so very nice. Uh, let's write his name down and let's keep going. I just got two one and a hundreds back to back. What is that? 
Mithril Bar and Studded Chaps. Oh, those nine bowstrings look so good in the invent though. And there is number 10, another 5 mil for Marimars, making such good progress on this. I would only manage to get 13 because my children woke up, so I'm going to go deal with them in a second. But I also just want to grab the 13 of these fellas that we can make. And let's go. I also dropped an amulet of torture in the bank, I believe on this square, so that should show up in a second for people to grab, <laughs> see if... Uh, See who gets it. Uh, hopefully it's one of the paupers and not one of the richies. But there is our first magic short bow on the account. So, 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 so nice. Gonna be so elite having one of these. Look at this. Oh, there it is. <laughs> okay. So there is the magic short bow. Look at the state of that. Let's grab ourselves the maple short bow out of the bank and we can compare what the stats are on these so uh, let's grab these as well so maple short bow 29 range attack with the black dehyde uh, it is 76 the ma magic short bow is an upgrade from 29 to 69 so it's like wearing an extra black dragon hide and a bit so that is a 116 range bonus, which I would say, not too bad. So let's go and get stuck in, I think. At, at Revenants, I mean, obviously get stuck in at Revenants. See if we can kill some of the higher level ones. And uh, yeah, that should be good. I think they will, hopefully until we get another cross by Orvagoras Chain Mace. But we also got a couple other interesting things in this, in this uh, little opening, which was... Mithril Bar, but we can't do anything with that. You know, obviously we've got the rune stuff already, so that doesn't add a new chunk goal. Jangaberry was cool. Snake Grass, pretty interesting. You know, if I need prayer pots in a jam at some point in the future after I unlock Herb Lore, potentially. Um, but the most interesting, the Garden Pie, which means if I get any sorts of, uh, you know, uh, farming grind at some point in the future, it will be markedly easier because I'll be able to get it, I think, three or four levels early um which is very actually which is actually really really nice so yeah I'm, I'm super happy to have that if we can kill these demons with any level of consistency now that we have the magic short bow um we should be more accurate our max hit should still be 17 i believe um, it's not looking great so far but i'm i know with a salve amulet we would be able to kill these things relatively easily so it's good having the magic short bow on the back burner anyway even if we stick to the pyre fiends special attack should help us finish them off that was not too bad 13 arrows on the floor mm, this might be decent you know we could we could get away with this i think um i just need to measure up the kills per hour that we get versus the um what's it the like drop rate to see if it's worth it over the pyre fiends but it doesn't feel too bad i don't feel really inaccurate it's obviously not like the pyre fiends where sometimes we just like three or four hit them but we're hitting relatively okay so maybe we'll get away with this um i'll definitely always be shooting here because i don't kill them quite at their spawn rate but it doesn't look too bad so we'll stick at it for now uh, 753 on the counter to start we're going to hop into 365 and we're going to do what 10 minutes and just kind of test how many kills per hour we are getting so let's give it a go it's our 10 minute stint oh let's see if we can grab a stale baguette to uh really mix things up no we cannot uh but how many kills did we get we got 14 kills in that time well it's actually 13 and a bit uh, because there was one that I finished off from nearly getting PK'd before I started the clip. Uh, so we're looking at mm, 13 kills, which is times 6, 78 kills per hour. So I just need to run some quick maths on that. In fact, I won't. What I'm going to do is do the Pyre Fiends and just check. So we're looking at 78 demon kills. And we're going to do some uh, Pyre Fiends over here and see what the comparison is like. 
the last Pyre Fiend kill. And I'll tell you what, I can really feel a noticeable difference between the Magic Shortbow and the Maple Shortbow, even here at the Pyre Fiends where they've got low range defense. Um, but we got 793 kills in 12 minutes. So we need to do, what, 26 kills times five, which would be 130 Pyre Fiends per hour. Now I just need to do some quick maths to figure out which one of those is better. So I shall be back shortly. Maths. And uh, it's 46 hours per unique at the demons and 35 and a half hours per unique at the Pyre Fiends. Now, it might seem like getting the magic short bow was a waste of time, but it definitely wasn't because um, I've definitely increased my kills per hour here by about 10% with the magic short bow. I just thought there was a chance that I might be able to kill um demons more efficiently but unfortunately not i think if i get a salve amulet it might be better because i think realistically i've capped my kills per hour here um in terms of how many i can get down per hour because i'm just waiting on spawn limits like i am now um so any kind of dps increases that i get isn't going to increase my kills per hour here it's only going to increase my kills per hour at other harder revenants so i think with a salve amulet those numbers might get a bit closer um and i think if we get a crossbow again or a vigorous chain mace uh, we'll be in a much better spot to really start kind of pushing some of the other revenants like we were before i know when we had our previous crossbow we were getting about 200 kills per hour uh, at the demons and cyclopses over here so i think once we get back to that we should be good the good thing about the magic short bow is that i can be sculled whilst using it um which kind of would be ideal if i can get a, uh, not salve amulet i keep saying salve amulet amulet of avarice and kill the demons and that's my fastest way it's good because i can be sculled whereas if i get another crossbow i'm definitely not going to be sculling with it again and so i need to get drastically more kills per hour um to get a kind of similar rate as i would scald at the pyre fiend so yeah hopefully we can get something soon Avarice would be brilliant, Crossbow would be brilliant, Mace would be brilliant, literally any of them. Um, but yeah, hopefully that happens soon. Okay, we've been doing some more uh, some more splashing. We're up to 86 and a half mage now. I think I've got the runes for about level 90 at the moment, so that should come relatively quickly. The buying of the runes is by far the most annoying part. The, uh, the remote desk topping to do the splashing is actually remarkably easy and calm and I do it pretty much all day uh, so the XP is gonna come rolling in quickly but yeah I think I probably won't go past my range level because it seems pointless getting needless combat levels uh, whilst we're doing the revenant chunk but yeah I at some point need to think about getting 60 defense because 60 defense is a uh, chunk task as well and it would be kind of annoying to do that right at the last second as well if you know what I mean so, yeah, I need to kind of think about when and how I'm going to do that. Bo! That! Oh, fuck, I shouldn't have put it in the bag. Oh, no. I put it in the bag again. No fucking way, I just wasn't looking at my screen at all. Oh my god, 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 oh my god. Okay, right, hover over the logout button. Okay, no, that guy can't attack me. Oh, just got another crossbow. No fucking way. Oh my god. <laughs> doesn't help with, yeah, this guy's right, Kono Chunk doesn't help me get in, uh, getting my strength up to do the agility, but we got a crossbow back. I tell you what. I will not be sculling up with that thing again. Oh my god, as if. No fucking way. Received a crossbow. Oh my god. Yes. Yes. Oh, I'm so happy. Put the crossbow back. Right, I need to uh, grab it, stick some ether in it. Oh. Oh, that's so good. No, I don't want 15,000, I want 1,500. Grab that fella. 
There we go. We f- As if I went through all that this episode to get a fucking crossbow right at the end. That's so funny. Oh, look at that bad boy. I'm so happy I've got this back. So happy. Oh my god. Look at that. Oh, I literally wasn't looking at my screen. I t- looked back at the screen and there's a crossbow sat on the floor. That's fucked. Oh my god, look. Look. Alright, swap those back around. We've got two full red weapons down. Look at the collection log. What's our kill count at the moment? 28,068. And we've got two crossbows in the coal log. That's so funny. Oh, I'm so happy about that. So happy about that. I'm so happy I got one back because it would have been really depressing having to get another crossbow having had one already. Oh, that's so juice. I wonder what my uh, max hit is going to be with that. Uh, now that I'm way... Because when last time I had a crossbow, I think it was like 84 range or something. So now I'm 93. It's gonna, probably going to be way better. That's so funny that I made all those short bows, paid loads of money for it, and don't even need them now. Oh, no. Okay. Um, right, do we need anything other than this? So, actually, I should be wearing a wizard's hat, shouldn't I? Because uh, that's actually slight amounts of bonus for me. Oh, look at that. We finally look like a fucking beast again. And I can tell you for free... I will not be sculling up with this bad boy. Um, but I think, I think if I do quads unsculled, it'll be about the same purples, uh, not purples, about the same unique rolls per hour as doing sculled pyrefiends um, with this thing. Um, and I'd be getting way more range XP per hour, way more kills per hour. So I'd be getting way more loot in terms of like regular items per hour. And frankly, loads of this stuff is going to be really useful because I need to get loads of U-logs, right, to get 75 fire making and 87 fletching. So I'll get way more of those per unique roll if I do quads or something with the with the crossbow. Oh, that is massive. That is so massive. I'm so happy. So happy. Oh, crossbow. That's nuts. That is nuts. Three weapons before getting a single amulet of avarice when these are twice as rare each as an amulet of avarice. That's kind of wild. Oh, 28,000 kill count. That is a lot though, isn't it? <laughs> Two girls' bows. Oh, just look at that thing. It just looks sexy. Oh, the clipping is terrible on the uh, region locker GPE plugin, but wow. Oh, that's so nice. Thank you for watching this one. I cannot believe that I spent nearly a whole week and 65 mil GP on making some magic short bows for us to use it for a grand total of about 90 minutes at the Revenants before getting our crossbow back. That is the best Christmas present Santa could have possibly got me. Um, well, it's not. I guess the mace would have been better, but the crossbow itself is just an unbelievable weapon. It's definitely what I've got the highest DPS with because I've only got 57 strength, so the mace would, in the short term, be rubbish. But the crossbow, in the long term, so going to be good for this account. I'm so pleased to get it back. If it wasn't obvious, I've recorded the intro to this video before I, like before, just before I did this clip, right? So... In actuality, I would have done what most people had done had I not had the crossbow by the end of this account, uh, like by the end of this chunk, sorry. I would have moved on and got it when I needed the web weaver, right? Um, so I just wanted to create a nice little story in the video um, for, for, for this one. So yeah, what I would have done was I would have moved on without the crossbow and then at the point that I unlocked Venon Artis and needed to equip a web weaver bow, I would have gone back to get the crossbow at that point to make the web weaver bow. But because we got the crossbow in this video, I thought it would be fun just to chuck in uh, chuck in that, 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 that bit at the start. Um, huge though, huge video for the like, t today i'm i'm so 
So happy to have the crossbow back. It's nice having the magic short bows anyway, because it's just a really nice, decent range weapon I can use outside of the wilderness in future as well. So it's not a waste getting them. Really nice to have. Um, but yeah, I'd like to just give a big shout out to the channel members as always. Uh, LS, the big man himself, Fontcest, Sir Yolo, Jack Stalmer, and Talfine, who I'd like to give a special shout out to, who did a 12 month uh, commit on his membership. So he got a little bit of a kind of discount over the year there, but you know, I'm a massive um, shout out to him for kind of having the faith in me that I'm going to deliver 12 months of uh, good content from here on out, which is uh, something I definitely intend to do. Um, so if you want to become a channel member, you know, head over to the website uh, where we also sell the merch, uh, which is doing quite well. Um, I think people are quite happy with it, which is, which is nice. Um, Crito, Fireball Tech coming in at the Rune tier. Thank you to those guys. El Pinin, Cum Crumpet and Soda at the Legend tier. And then we've got all the Gold tier members. Avery Fields, Eddie Mayer, Shocked Thief, Mitchell Nunley, DJ Focus, Grimsley, Grimzoso, Salnex or Kai, Hunterman, Carl Sprouse, Ninrim, Papa Brando, Squang, Olivet, Hazmat83, Nilo360, Crow Poro, Vandio Gaming, Cluey Louie, Asher Anchor, Dominique G, and Spooky Pasta. Thank you so much to all the guys and girls probably for becoming members of the channel. Really, really appreciate it. And I will see you guys in the next video. Oh, and if you really want to support the channel and don't want to spend any money, then uh, downloading Raid Shadow Legends using the link on screen or the QR code on screen or the link in the description would be the best way of doing so. And I would really, really appreciate it. Thank you very much.